In this video, I'm going to create this middle section of my website, which includes a thumbnail grid. I'm going to set up the properties of the section itself using CSS and then insert these columns as divs. And then within each div, I will insert these thumbnail images or the small images, which will eventually open the larger images when you click on them. For my CSS designer, I will click inside my section and then I'll add my selector. Now sometimes you don't see the plus button for the selector active. So you just need to go click on sources because we have web fonts already in this website, we have styles coming in from the web, web font also. But I want to add these styles into my CSS file that I had created. So I click on style.css and then you notice the plus sign to add a new selector appears. I'm going to collapse the sources panel and then go ahead and add a selector for section. Now you notice Dreamweaver says body section, but of course I have only one section and it is inside my body, my page body. Where else would it be? So I remove the word body and the selector will still work. It will still apply to this section of my page. For my section, uh, it's full width. So I'm going to set the width to 100%. But inside my section, I will place a container, which is 1000 pixel width. So it'll line up with my header container and eventually my footer container will line up with them too. So the section itself is full width or 100% and it has a white background. The container will have a width of 1000 pixels. Now by default, if you don't specify a background color for your page or for any portion of your page, the default background color that the browser assumes is white. Since my section is white, I don't really need to specify a background color. But let's say your section is a different color. In that case, for your section with uh, the selector chosen, you would go up to the background properties and then choose a background color from here. Since mine is white, I don't really need to do it. I could, of course, just choose white from here. That's the hex code for white. Uh, but as you can see, it still looks the same. So whether I have this or not, it'll still look white. So moving forward, I'm going to add a container inside the section. So I come down to my code area. I click inside my section. In fact, I can even uh, remove this placeholder text. Now my cursor is blinking inside the section. This is the place that I want to insert my container. So I go up to insert, div, and give it a class of container and click OK. So I inserted a div of class container and the div appears here inside the section. Now here's the thing. Because it has a class of container, and earlier when I created the header, I made a div of class container there, and I assigned it some styles, which were a width of a 1,000 pixels and a left and right margin of auto, which meant to center it on the page. The same styles will automatically apply to this new container. That's the advantage of using a class when you have more than one div on your page that shares the same properties. The class will make it so much easier to set properties for all of those divs and then if you make one change then all the containers or all the divs that share the same class will get updated. So this new container already has a width of a thousand pixels and it will be centered on the page. I can go ahead and start adding some content in there. 
So looking at my wireframe, I've chosen to create my grid so that it is in columns, which means every little thumbnail image has the exact same width, but they have different heights. So I've stacked them one on top of each other so they will all share the same width and become one column. And then I have five such columns. So as you can see, now I have five divs sharing the same kind of properties. So I can use a class to create this. I'm going to insert a div and create a new class for column inside my section container. So I will delete this text where it says content for class container goes here. And now I'll go ahead and insert a new div. At insertion point is good. And then I give it a class of column. I'm going to use the same column structure on my inside pages as well. So once the work is done for my home page, it'll be easy to replicate to other pages. Now you can see inside my container, I have a new div of class column and then some placeholder text that says content for class column goes here. Now since I want five columns, I'm going to copy this line of code and then I'm going to insert a new line and just paste it. And again. And again. And one more time. So now I have one, two, three, four, five columns inside my section container. So if I click in here, you can see that the design view updates and shows me five columns. Now I'm ready to give it some styles. So with my cursor inside my column div or the column tag, I'm going to go ahead and add a new selector. Now, as you can see, the selector says dot container dot column. Like before, I can remove dot container since uh, all my columns on my website will be inside the container. And I'm left with a selector called dot column. Now, what are the properties of my column div? I have five columns inside a space of 1,000 pixels. So that means I can have up to 200 pixels for each column. Inside that, I have images. Now, my images are already created. If I go up to my files panel, I can show you. I have an images folder, which I just added into my site folder. And inside that, I have all these thumbnail images that I need for the home page. And these thumbnail images are about 190 pixels wide. So they're a little less than 200, which is the width of a column. I'm going to set the width of my column to 200 pixels. I'm not going to set the height because the height will automatically get adjusted as I start placing images into the columns. I'm also going to set the float for the column. I'm going to set the column div to float left. And because I'm applying that to the class, all five of these will float left so that they will show up side by side. So let's go ahead and do that. I go into my CSS designer choose my column selector and go up to the layout properties. My width will be 200 pixels. As you can see, they got um, resized to 200 pixels, but they're one below each other. That's because they're not floating yet. Now I'm going to go set the float to left. Now as soon as I do that, you notice all the columns show up side by side. So I have enough room to accommodate all five columns in one row because each column is set to 200 pixels and my container is set to 1000 pixels. Now I'm ready to start adding images 
within these columns. So I'm going to the first column and I delete this placeholder text and I'll just start adding the images. I position my cursor inside the column and then I go in and insert all four images one by one. So first is the robot run. I position the cursor after the robot run. Insert another image. And it shows up right below it. Then I put the cursor after this image. Insert the next one. And then I position the cursor after this one and insert the next one. You notice I'm not adding line breaks between these images. I'm just inserting the images one after another. Because there's not enough room to show these images side by side, each new image that I add automatically wraps to the next line. So my images are in there, but I have some alignment issues. For one, I, w I want some space between the images vertically and secondly I want some empty space at the top of my section. Both of these are easy to do. First the empty space at the top of my section. So I click on the section selector. Let me go over to Photoshop and check how much space I want to add there. So it's about 100 pixels of space. Now since this is space at the top of my section, I can add it as padding. So I'm going to add 100 pixels of padding at the top of my section. Now I will not do this to the container because I'm using that container elsewhere. If I were to add 100 pixels of padding in top, at the top of my container, the same 100 pixels of padding would be added here and here in the container. So you have to be careful where you're adding the styles. Especially when you use classes, you have to be mindful that you only add properties that you want all elements of that class to have. In this case, I don't want all containers to have a top padding of 100 pixels. So I will not add the style there. I will add the style into the section itself. So I choose section here. And in my layout properties, I go to padding and make sure that this link is not on because I just want to set the top padding not the others and then I go in and type 100 pixels now in Dreamweaver when you're typing these dimensions if you don't add a unit just type the number and hit enter it will choose pixels by default so I just type 100 hit enter and it assumes 100 pixels now here I have got the new 100 pixels of space above my section, which is great. Now I want to add some space below these images. So for each image, I have about 10, about 10 pixels of space there. So here's what I'll do. Since every single image inside my column div needs to have this, I can just create one CSS rule that applies to all images inside columns and then every single image will have the 10 pixels of space below it. So watch this. I just click on the image and I go in and add a selector for it. Now you can see the selector says dot container dot column img which means this selector applies to all images inside all divs of class column inside all divs of class container. As before, I can remove dot container, but I do need to keep column because I have other images on my page too. I don't want every single image to have a bottom margin of 10 pixels, only the images inside my columns. So this is the perfect selector now, which says all images inside all divs of class column. So with this selector chosen, I go in and add a bottom margin of 10 pixels. And that does it. You notice I only added it once, but every single image in this column has the 10 pixels of space below it. And because my images are about 190 pixels, but my column is 200, I have a little space to the right. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add the images for the other columns. So second column, I just delete this, and then I'm going to go through and add all the thumbnail images. Now that I've added all my thumbnails, I go ahead and save all, and then I will preview this in Safari. So there you see, my thumbnail grid is ready. Simply by adding the right classes, it made the job so much easier. Now I do see one change that I want to make. I feel like the space between at the bottom of each thumbnail is too much. So I'm going to update that now. So that's easy. I'm going to go to dot column image, which is the selector for all images inside columns. I'll go to the bottom margin and I'll bring it down to about, let's try nine. So I'll save all again and then preview. Okay, so I could reduce it a little more. I'm going to bring this down to 8 and save all and preview. Let's reduce it a little more. Let's do 7. So now, each of my thumbnail images will eventually be linked so when I click on it, the big image opens up. For now, I'm just going to go through and assign dummy links. So I'll go to each image. I'll keep the properties window open. And then under link, I'll just type the pound sign, which refers to a dummy link, a link that goes nowhere. So now all these images have a dummy link assigned to it. So now I'm going to add a little hover effect for all of these images. So when my mouse hovers over them, there's a little bit of a change visually, and it adds a little more interactivity to the site. So I'm going to click on any one image, doesn't matter, because the same rule will apply to all images. And I'll add a selector. So you notice now that I've added the links, the selector comes out a little different. It says dot column A image, just because all the image tags are now wrapped in A tags. That's why this changed. So it's an image inside a link tag inside a column, and that's fine. But I only want this style to apply when the mouse hovers over it. So after image, I'm going to add colon hover. And upon hover, I will add a style to it. And this style is a shadow, like a little drop shadow. So I'm going to add a drop shadow of uh, a medium light gray. And I'll increase the size of the shadow to about five pixels. I don't want it very big. And a blur of about five pixels also. Let's try this. So I'm going to save all and preview. Okay, so this is what my shadow looks like. Every time I hover over an image, it just gets a little drop shadow.
This is just one way to add a little more interactivity to your site. There are many ways of doing this. Uh, on some websites, you'll notice that the image itself has a low opacity, but when you hover over it, it uh, becomes solid, it becomes full opacity. There are other websites that actually swap out the images. So when you look at their thumbnail grid, for example, all the thumbnails will be black and white, but when you hover over each image, it'll get replaced by a color version of that image. That kind of effect is not done through CSS, but it's actually done as a rollover image in Dreamweaver. If you want to do that for your website, instead of inserting images, first thing, you have to prepare both versions of the image. For example, black and white and color uh, of the same size, but then uh, just the color is different. And then when you have all the images prepared, instead of just inserting a single image, you would go to insert, HTML, rollover image. So rollover image is an image that actually gets replaced by a different image file when you hover over it. And then when you take the mouse away from it, it reverts back to the original image. So those are some ways of adding a little more fun and life and interactivity to your thumbnail grid. In my case, uh, I just wanted to keep it subtle, so this is what I have. And now you can apply these ideas and these techniques to your own thumbnail grid in your section.